This is Dave Baker, Senior Director, Investment Strategy and Research from Laird Norton Wealth Management with the April 2022 Flash Report. Well, regular viewers may note I'm in a new location today, and yes, uh, I'm happy to be visiting my Weatherby colleagues in San Francisco for a few days. Uh, in financial markets, we got off to a bit of a rough start this quarter, um, with commodities just being just about the only area that was positive. Uh, fortunately, March was a little bit different, uh, felt more normal with the stratification uh, of winners and losers. As far as the U.S. economy goes, we had a mixed bag uh, of indicators with the balance of labor market data showing resiliency. Uh, that includes uh, the unemployment rate, which fell to 3.6%, uh, all while we saw a growing labor force. So that's great news. Um, however, that was offset somewhat by um, uh, weaker housing data, uh, an unexpected decline in durable goods orders, and certainly uh, an inflation rate that doesn't seem to want to slow down. Inflation and interest rates were the chief concerns for U.S. equity investors. Uh, well, the, the war in Ukraine continues. I think you had investors believing they had a better sense of the, the scope of the financial and economic impacts, and so we saw kind of a relief rally. Overseas, non-U.S. equities lagged their U.S. counterparts with weaker manufacturing, or manufacturing data in Europe, and then we also saw um, uh, a weaker economic outlook as kind of the fallout of the Russian san sanctions uh, impacting Japan. China equities also continue to struggle, uh, with the latest headwinds being the potential delisting of Chinese stocks from U.S. exchanges over auditing standards, and we're also seeing rising COVID cases in China. In fixed income, yields continue to rise, with the 10-year Treasury uh, hitting 2.4% at the end of the month. Uh, perhaps more signi uh, significantly, however, we're, the two-year Treasury now yields more uh, than the 10-year Treasury in a phenomenon called uh, yield curve inver uh, inversion. And historically, that's a, considered a leading indicator of recession. Real assets uh, continue to lead major financial asset categories highlighted by commodities. Um, commodities had a nearly 9% gain, which capped off the strongest quarter in the last 30 years. Um, Amongst commodities, the price of gasoline has hit, has hit an all-time high, and uh, so we've seen the Biden administration release uh, a million barrels uh, of crude oil per day from the Strategic Oil Reserve, uh, while many states are looking at acting gas tax holidays to hopefully not crimp consumer budgets too much. Uh, looking forward, uh, the war in Ukraine will continue to be a major influence on financial markets. Uh, over time, we've seen market participants make hasty conclusions about um, the uh, uh, political conflicts in their timelines. Uh, so let's hope for a speedy recovery, a speedy resolution, but plan on further volatility in the months ahead. On inflation, there's no denying that the war has only added additional kindling to the fire of inflation. Um, with supply chains and labor markets dislocated in the short term. That said, I'll point out uh, that the Fed has, uh, po has positioned themselves to move aggressively to attack inflation with higher interest rates, and that if we address that inverted yield curve, that part of the reason it looks the way it does with the long end uh, not uh, having a greater yield than the short end is because longer term investors don't anticipate the kind of uh, inflation that we're seeing today. Uh, does the yield curve inversion mean a recession is coming? Uh, well, maybe, uh, but like most indicators, it doesn't do a great job of saying when, and it certainly doesn't speak to the severity of the recession should it come, so let's not overreact. Well, what does this all mean for portfolios? Uh, real assets continue to have benefits in this inflationary environment. Uh, in addition, I'll say that given our concerns over the near-term diversification value of fixed income, we've made allocations to diversifiers, such as cash and hedge funds, and yes, real assets again, um, that all have served to benefit portfolios over the last several months uh, as we've seen fixed income hit a rough patch. Anyhow, that's all I have for April. Thanks for listening, and let's chat again next time.